Well, you can um, concentrate on the breath. Uh, just the inhalation, exhalation, you get very uh, learning to relax with the inhalation, exhalation. Uh, you can use a mantra, you can say puto, or, or I used to use peace, like I used to inhale, peace, exhale, peace, and that. That gets uh, tran- tranquility. Also, you can use it with the sound of silence, so inhaling. From the beginning to the end of the inhalation, you're with the silence. The beginning of the exhalation to the end of the exhalation. The f- that also works. Also, when you're walking, doing walking meditation, uh, to uh, listen to the sound of silence, determine that when you're at this end of the path, and tune into the sound of silence, and then with each step, the silence down to the and turning around so that the silence is like a background for the walking. Mm. It's also very good. Remember the sound of silence is like a, it embraces, so uh, it's, it's, uh, it doesn't exclude. So it, yeah, it, um, It's very useful, and in, in even uh, when you go home and you go to your work and see if you can use it, you know, just to keep keep uh, kind of tuning in, so that then you you'll find uh, that uh, it helps a lot in just dealing with not getting in it when in stopping the kind of Uh, habitualness of things, or the routines of life, or, or just getting, kind of just going through the, you know, perfunctory way going through things, you know, you kind of the silence, uh, meetings and things like this, it helps to compose yourself, and if you're kind of in a state of anxiety, or you're particularly kind of disturbed by what they're saying at the meeting, you can retire into the silence. Works very well that way too. Sometimes hard to remember. The real challenge is when you're really upset, emotionally upset, and then the silence. <laughs> Well, with uh, <coughs> investigating, really, uh, uh, not, you know, some people don't, a lot of people don't see any value in the, using the silence, so that they, they, have, they get committed to various practices and, um, or techniques, they get they, you know, they'll get very involved with a technique or a, or a, um, or just, uh, you know, you get, you go through various stages. It seems like, like, uh, but we all have to, to face, uh, you know, like a lot of us come in to the monastic life quite inspired. Uh, and so that, 
that that kind of inspiration uh, can carry you quite a ways, and then it, and then, um, and when you're inspired, then you really like to meditate, and and when you when you get some kind of tranquility, and and you feel you get in places or that, then you that keeps the keeps your interest going, and but then after a while, all your all these things don't work anymore, unless you really you know, really uh, had insight into the way things are. Just, just inspiration and, uh, and uh, the, and, and say, idealism and, and that will, will work for a while. That can, can oftentimes get you going. But the, uh, like I've been, my particular approach is always, I've always been uh, very much, uh, uh, a spiritually oriented person. You know, I've always wanted to penetrate the spiritual questions. So like the unconditioned and the bond and all these have fascinated me from the beginning. You know, the, so right from the very beginning I've had this, you know, this, uh, this, this, this uh, quote, you know, there is the unborn, uncreated. And so, well, that really fascinates me. Uh, and uh, but some people don't find that at all inspiring, you know. So that uh, some people want a a community life, or looking for some kind of lifestyle in the world, and there's different reasons. Different different uh, people have different reasons for doing this. But I, and also I haven't I haven't really emphasized using the sound of silence till fairly recently because when I first started real using it I I just wanted to before I started teaching too much but I wanted to s- test it out long enough to know what the long-term results are you know so uh, <laughs> so sometimes I'd, I'd mention it for quite a few years but some people I never Gave it uh, the significance that I do now, so so that uh, some people have never really caught on to it or, or appreciated it, um, <coughs> or they just think it. You know, they can just say it's just one of Ajahn Sumedho's funny things. It's, uh, <laughs> but in terms of of uh, of uh, practice, you know, I find it. it you know, very uh, powerful for me in gaining confidence and in uh, and in and in re- really penetrating the the illusions of self and and the uh, worldly conditions. Um, also, the you know, like I just emotionally, we're conditioned for something else. You know, they say. There, you know, one uh, people do get, uh, you know, that may, there's a, sometimes one wants to just get high in meditation, you know, like really get blissed out, and and uh, that's a very strong attraction, you know. To they see meditation as maybe a, an opportunity to to uh, to kind of get very high, very kind of refined. And so that, that's uh, also, yeah, but that, incre- you know, that just increases the, the sense of a self, this, this desire to for, for rapture and for bliss and for um, a kind of, or tranquility. Um, so that, and, and the, the, the middle way is a subtle one because it's not high, not low, uh, it's it's ordinary. It's so ordinary that we don't see it. You know, like it's like it, it, the sound of silence is so ordinary. We nobody pays attention to it until you to say, "Have you ever heard that sound?" And, and but it, it, I mean, it's been going on ever since you were born. So, I mean, it it isn't that it's not there. It's just you don't. It's like 
you know, the space and all that is so so present that you don't don't pay attention, don't notice. And so the this awakened state, you know, you begin to really the way the Buddhas of wake up, pay attention, uh, contemplate existence. So you're 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 learning to to tune in on that level, and and then also as a transcendent is the door or the gate to the deathless. It, when you use it, contemplate it in that way, it works very well. Because I'm not talking about the deathless as some, you know, ultimate thing that, that on, on a, you know, that, that one is uh, going to realize uh, after years of meditation, but but uh, contemplating what that is is experience now. You see, so it's like a, a a conundrum where you, what is the deathless? If if if, it, if Dhamma is here and now, apparent here and now, timeless, what can it be then? You know, so you so you kind of, you know, if you can, if you keep putting it off for some possible future experience. Uh, then you're, then uh, that's what's one way of just uh, dismissing it or seeing it's not, not worth bothering with. But for me, it was always this, this, uh, you know, questioning, looking into and seeing and just observing experience, so that I more awake to what is immediate that that I might never have noticed before, because it's so close, so, so, uh, so here, so present so kind of integrated into this moment that I, that I wouldn't notice where, uh, say, if I'm trying to, to get like different levels of, of concentration, that, then that gives me, puts me into this state of, of uh, you know, doing something in order to get a result. Uh, and, and then that, that kind of mental state is always, uh, it's always looking to the future for, fut- for results. And uh, so I, you know, I've seen that 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 the the, the gaining mind, the idea of attaining, uh, was not were not helpful perceptions to me in this life because that's how I'm conditioned by my culture and education is a, to gain. So the, uh, the the idea of relinquishment began to um, help me a lot. The idea of like, like, I remember when you read Brasuti Mago or something like that. You uh, reading that years ago, and you get this idea that that jhanas are things you gain, and so you, you know, I remember putting in so much effort to gain these states, and and it's just you know you through sometimes you actually could feel you gain something, but then, but then because the whole attitude was based on the illusion of a self getting something, it, it had no, you know, you'd lose it. You feel if you gain something, you'd lose it. So I, so I noticed that, that, this, uh, that this gaining mind was, was uh, not to be the kind of basis for practice. So this is why I, why I, I emphasize um, the, this uh, gratitude, contentment, patience, things that that where you feel a sense of of ease in the present, where your mind is is open and willing to awaken to to what what the way things are now, rather than following the illusion of gaining and achieving and becoming, and and feeding those kind of uh, mental conditions, and then then like like when you develop like like contentment actually is is like pity it's it's a uh, one of the jhana factors when you if you but to be content means not to you don't gain it you more or less learn how to let go of things that restlessness and the gaining mind and the desire to achieve and and all this intense you know trying and and uh, seeking to uh, develop a sense of contentment in the present, of just being, and content with just this 
with the body and the feeling of sense of just relaxing and peacefulness in the posture in the present, then the the happiness, the sukha, comes, and then the the um, and then more and more you 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 feel this ache, this uh, one pointedness and equanimity, and the uh, sound of silence comes very strong in there because uh, is that when the when the when there's no grasping and there's no striving, then you're in a relaxed st- an attentive state, but relaxed. And therefore, you begin to notice uh, this sound of silence. That's how I, that's how I experience it, anyway. So the um, I also used to love to listen to myself inwardly. So you know, I was, you know, I'd, I'd you know, I'd. I'd uh, I, I, this, uh, this, this sense of listening, the soda wanta. I, I, if I was in an emotional state or something, and my ego was was uh, very active, then I'd listen to it, and I'd even, you know, make it say things to me. So, you know, like like if, if I was in a angry with somebody, I'd I'd hear, you know, I'd hear, I'd listen to. To my ego saying, I'm really angry, that person really shouldn't have done that, and that's unfair, it's not right, and and I'm really fed up with that person, and I'm just, you know, had enough, and, and I just listen uh, to, and, and try to give voice to this anger, not, you know, not a vo- but in listening in, in, inwardly. And then, just by but I'm but just more like a a neutral listener, not a judging listener. You know, whatever this my ego's saying, I'm just listening to it. It's not not say, not making any kind of moral judgments about it or about myself or, or about the, my ego. But just learning to listen, to hear it, and then then after a while it wear, it would wear out. You know, the 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 kind of Anger would uh, would you know, you know you once you've kind of accepted it and then it kind of has its moments then it then it stops and then there's this not anger you know so that it was uh, through through listening to to anger and to non anger that that I could really see what what my ego is in terms of experience and how you know, it could say all kinds of things and outrageous things and and carry on, you know. And I just let it. I wasn't trying to be a reasonable, uh, you know, senior monk, uh, uh, be trying to be fair and nice about everything and compassionate. I'd, I'd really try to, to bring up, you know, put it into, uh, into the terms of, uh, of anger without judging it, you know, without making personal judgments about it. And this, this uh, because sometimes, you know, when we, we fool ourselves a lot when we, we want, you know, we want to act like, we, we don't want to sometimes see the, uh, the nastiness in ourselves. And so we, we try to kind of edit it a bit, you know, and, and, and make ourselves uh, um, Sound at least you know reasonable and and uh, you know we can admit we're angry, but after all, you know everybody gets angry that kind of thing. <laughs> but, but the uh, you know just quite quite willing to listen to it to its rubbish to its uh, to its uh, nastiness without judging it. And so I'd I'd kind of deliberately do that and, and, it, and it would wear out and I found that was a way to to not suppress or not be afraid anymore but not to believe it either so whatever it said I'd listen to it but I, I, I knew that it wasn't it was just a a habit you know it wasn't wasn't a person it wasn't a 
wasn't mine, wasn't me, wasn't anything. It's just that's that's the uh, when anger, when you give voice to anger, that's what it says. You know, I hate, I don't like, I'm fed up. Then uh, and then with um, self-consciousness, resentment, jealousy. Uh, all these emotions, I do that, it, and then, but then it always take me to emptiness again. So that this, this, uh, these emotions were not just denied or, or, uh, you know, I wasn't trying to, to get rid of them, but to, to learn how to, to accept the conditioned realm within the unconditioned. So just by this, this. Uh, this mindfulness and this listening and attention, then, then establishing the, the kind of base, you know, the the the, the present moment uh, of being present at this moment is is establishing in this unconditioned, where the conditions then uh, are in a perspective of you know, that you very much aware of the. Anicca dukkanata of them. And then I'd say, well, okay, this, this anger is here. So listen to it. And, and, uh, and then I just, just kind of contemplate, well, this anger, you know, it's going on, but there's this, that which is aware of anger isn't angry, is it? You know, so I'd kind of you know, inform myself that this, this mindfulness isn't angry. That which is aware of anger isn't angry. The, the, the emotion is angry, that's it. It's anger, anger is like this. So, so more and more, rather than, than identifying with the emotion and, and complicating that, I, I begin to trust in just being the awareness. Because that, that would never be stained by the emotional stuff that's going on. That's why when I talk about this purity, um, you know, it's it's pure. You know, your true nature is pure, stainless. Nothing can nothing can stain it. Nothing can harm it. You know. So when you're when you're oh, the only problem is we forget about it and we get attached to the things that are stained and 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 that uh, you know have qualities and of, of pleasure and pain and beautiful and ugly but when as soon as we awaken then when we let go of those you know we, we begin to realize the know the uh, letting go uh, of the condition and then we, we're back to the original nature of purity, which we can trust. And that's with what is a refuge. Buddha knowing the Dhamma. Uh, <coughs> I just wondered, uh, do you find yourself uh, when you're with uh, uh, people who are, uh, you know, different? Uh, and who may be projecting anger on you and really going at you that uh, <clears throat> even though you you know you, you, you're observing what's coming up do you have a physiological reaction I mean that people pick up on I mean you know, red face huff <laughs> 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 and snark or something I don't know but do, do people pick up on that or is it the whole physiological being uh, well, let's say I'm I'm better than I was. <laughs> I found, you know, like it really. Uh, um, I mean, this is where it's a real challenge because this awakened state is is it's so easy to. Well, especially when when somebody's being very uh, saying very hurtful things, and uh, and you find you know you really 
you feel really hurt and uh, and it brings up this sense of, of being really wounded uh, and and it's so easy to to give that your attention to attach to that you know so this is where this uh, this um, because you feel it you know it's, it's just it's not just a intellectual thing but you feel it in your body and 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 uh, it it really uh, you know you you know it really hurts you but the but the um, but I found that through always it's like even if I at moments or even at you know a long time I forget and get caught up in in my wounds and my hurts but there's always something in me now that won't that won't won't get doesn't doesn't really believe it anymore and is and knows how to to deal with it more uh, you know honestly and more immediately so it's, it's just through 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 really practicing with it that you and and investigate you gain increasingly more confidence and and then after a while you just think that's the only thing worth doing you know I used to get intimidated like like people say you're a, you you're a, like you you're an angry man and I think, maybe I am or they'll say they say you uh, you're in denial and uh, you know, so I thought, you know, well, no, I'm not. I, I don't. I'm not. <laughs> and I, you know, I start, I'd let myself get a, get kind of intimidated and and you could consider, you know, is this is this a, you know, because how other people see me sometimes when they, now now is the day now is the time for feedback. You know, everybody wants this is this is the jargon of the age. We give feedback now, so. So, so, well, one time everybody was afraid to give me any feedback. Now they, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> so that this uh, this feedback is where they, you know, they, they, and you, and then you, because, you know, I wasn't really used to it. Then, uh, then I tended to, uh, to, uh, you know, question it, and I could allow myself to to get intimidated by it. And, but it would also really help me to see where uh, uh, some subtle defilements uh, too that would arise, like wanting, just like wanting to be, um, to be liked or wanting to be, um, wanting to have a peaceful community, wanting, you know, there's kind of even good things that 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 uh, that uh, the ego can produce uh, that are are good, so you don't really think of them as the ego. they seem just you know normal normal inclination. But I can see even the the desire for wanting a peaceful, uh, harmonious community, you know, is uh, grasping that one is is takes you to when it. When when it's not peaceful, you get very upset, and then and then it's easy to blame. Uh, you know, it's easy to blame if somebody is. You know, if you all agree that this person is the cause, but oftentimes not that easy. Or or you can think maybe that you're the cause. Maybe I'm the cause of this through my blindness because I'm, you know, several generations older than most of the people I live with. So that these kind of doubts would come in, and and they would, uh, and I could allow uh, myself to be intimidated by them. But but now the, my my confidence, you know, after being allowing, giving in, and seeing the result, I realize I don't have to do that anymore. That I'm just if I just trust more in this refuge and and uh, and uh, with mindfulness, this simple way of meditating, then. I mean, it's you know, people can say what they want, and and I'm, and and uh, you know, I'm not. I'm going. I'll listen to them too, just like I listen to myself. But the tendency to allow myself to in, to be intimidated is, I say, minimal now. 
but it's been, you know, it's been uh, not all that easy to do. But it, you can do it, that's the thing. And, um, and I figured this out all on my own. I mean, this, I've never, no one's teachers ever taught me this. This is through experience. So, so it, <laughs> it, uh, it, um, isn't like a, you know, that's why I would, I could allow, you know, I would allow myself to be, get intimidated just to, to see what the result would be. Like, I, I noticed that, that, uh, that the, um, you know, for a while, it's, uh, you know, I could see that, 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 like, in the community, certain, certain people resent me a lot. So, so then uh, you think that uh, that that is, um, you know, that when then they they quite you know act in ways or say things that that convey this message, and you and and then you they they can list all kinds of mistakes that I've made over the years and to prove their point and. And then, then that puts me, you know, I can easily get defensive over things like that. And, and so I can see these tendencies, you know, to, to, because, uh, to, to get defensive when I'm, when I'm going to be criticized for, you know, things I have done that were wrong, you know, not to, they, they aren't, they did not true. But it's this, this, uh, this tendency to always want to dwell on what, to make such a big thing about the mistakes, and because then that that the reaction is from me to 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 want to point out all the things they've done wrong, you see, <laughs> or the things I don't or resent about them. So then I've noticed that that when you have when you meet and you uh, on that level that it. It it just creates more resentment, you know. I don't. I just don't see the the good result from it. So, uh, and even though you've been, you said trying to be honest. I'm just being honest. I'm saying what I feel, and, and this <laughs> kind of thing. And you, but it leaves you still, you know. It it, it it doesn't resolve. At least in me, it wouldn't. It doesn't. And so then I realized that 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 maybe, you know, that that. That um, if I if I do that to somebody and then they they do that to me, it just it gets us nowhere, it increases the uh, the sense of alienation. So so then I've 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 put an enormous effort to to not do that, not to dwell on what I don't like about people, and it's uh, it, which doesn't mean I'm denying that, but I don't I don't find any value in in, in keep holding on to those memories or those ideas I have and and to try to remember uh, to to have the more mudita style of uh, rejoicing in their goodness and uh, I find that much more you know beneficial to me and and I and I, and I hope to them too because uh, then you know you you you're not you're not really making problems about the past. Uh, you're not you know, and you can uh, apologize, you know, for the things I've done in the past. I'm quite willing to, you know, apologize for it. But uh, but a lot of things also are just you know projections that people have. You know, and they just. They just hold on to resentments, and and so I've seen seen that in myself uh, how the uh, how to let go of that that whole pattern of resentment, uh, and to uh, to uh, not create any more, not 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 believe in the resentments that. That might come up, not to not to empower them anymore. I find that when I'm doing therapy with people, and I understand the personal dynamics, 
and I have sort of a professional uh, detachment uh, that I can take almost anything. I can take, th because people will often uh, lash out. But in my mind, I know their personal anatomy. I know where it comes from. So it doesn't really hurt. Uh, but uh, this is not this is not the case with me when I'm with, uh, you know, family. Yeah. My Italian relatives, you know, that it's really, <laughs> I mean, they, they, you know, if, if they love you, they really lash out. I mean, they don't really uh, hold in at all. I mean, they, a lot of the stuff comes out. <laughs> and uh, um, that's a completely, I don't have that detachment. And it really gets shaken. <laughs> <laughs> good, good practice for you. Right? <laughs> 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 and you can, you can you, you try it, you know. To to uh, use the sound of silence, and 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 by by also accepting the the emotional uh, shattering for what it is, and after a while that that I think that you know I can see you're not because you're not reinforcing the habit, then the tendency to 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 feel that way, you know, it fades out. Doesn't doesn't have any doesn't have, isn't being uh, supported anymore because it's some you know the closer they are you know like like when you know somebody's a you know and they're not close but they're you know they somebody accuses me of something you know and I and they they're not you know they just somebody doesn't know anything you, it's easy to to not feel it or even laugh, you know, not to take it, think it's rather funny that they think that. But, but uh, when it gets into the closer the relationship, all that, then it, you know, because you're, you're, then you feel, uh, you know, you can really be hurt by the people closest to you. Especially our children. Especially our own children. Yes. They know our weak point <laughs> Is that right? No <laughs> problem. <laughs> 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 when you are allowing the anger to come into you and, and, and watching it, just come a bit quicker. Uh, well, that that is the come of Vipaka. You see, so it. It's putting it in that perspective, rather than as a personal. When it, when it becomes, when you're making new kama with the kama vipaka, means you're attaching to it out of ignorance. So then you you're either indulging in it heedlessly, or you're trying to resist it. So that then you then you're creating new kama with the kama vipaka. But if you if you're if, the kama, if you're mindful of the vipaka in the present, then you're actually making, you're not making any karma with it anymore. So it, that's why it fades out. It has, it has, you're not connecting to it by accepting it. See, a, a, connecting to it out of ignorance means that you're either indulging in it, you getting, or you're trying to deny it. And this, the middle way is is neither uh, indulging or or in denying. Yeah, if that's, uh, that's probably, I found that helpful, especially to, to stop the, uh, this uh, obsessive, you know, tendency, compulsiveness. Because like meditation, you probably uh, have seen yourself how even meditation can become just, you know, very compulsive act. You know, and you get, I've got to meditate and, and, uh, 
and then you think, I didn't I didn't do my meditation today and <laughs> so <laughs> everything becomes you know it's just another thing that you have to do in your life and so nothing is is a good reflection if, if you find that it helps to 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 center yourself if you know to stop that tendency towards compulsivity. I remember thinking, you know, just sitting, remember in the early days at Watpa Point, getting, I'd be so compulsive about everything. I couldn't just be a, an ordinary monk and just live a mindful life in a monastery. It's, it's, you know, I'm gonna, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. Because, I, I, you know, I pushed myself for so many years in lay life. And uh, so I, that that same habit was as strong as ever in the monastic life. So, so I kind of you know just, I just saw after a while you know the results of this compulsivity, and then I I found suddenly I was just, I re, I read a Zen book about not having to do anything, being nobody, doing nothing. Something to me it's kind of like that. So, I remember sitting there in the meditation hall and you know, this kind of, I've got a meditate feeling come over and I think, no, 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 not anybody, not doing anything. <laughs> and suddenly I just felt this sort of kind of real ease, you know, what a relief, you know. <laughs> Going nowhere, not getting anything, doing nothing. And, that, and suddenly I just kind of feel really happy, you know, quite relaxed uh, as a, because it stopped, you know, suddenly I just stopped this, this grinding pushiness of my mind. And then, then, then it's, you know, it was uh, that tendency towards, uh, towards achievement was, would easily take me over again. And everything I touched was always seemed to be to be stained with this compulsivity, <laughs> and uh, and so then even you know I try doing nothing, it become compulsive. That's why it didn't work. Cause then, you know, <laughs> don't have to do anything. Don't have to do anything. <laughs> but, uh, so then more rather than just relying on a on a technique, more the techniques help, but then. The, uh, you're realizing the. Uh, you can easily get attached to the to the technique, like like I remember when I first had the insights into letting go. It really worked. All I had to say is let go, and I could let go of things. I thought this is wonderful. All I have to do is say to myself, "Let go," and it seems to work. You know, so, so I so I, uh, you know, I keep saying, "Let go, let go," and after a while, it didn't work. <laughs> Because <laughs> I, I become, you know, kind of habituated. It became like a, you know, it, I'd, I'd be attached to the idea of letting go, and and where at first it wasn't, it was actually you know quite, um, you know, it worked, and it, and it was because I'd always been, never thought of things like in that way, you know, of letting go. I was thinking, of, you know, not letting go, really keeping with something. Uh, so then, but then, then, then reflecting on the experience of non-attachment, letting go, as more and more you, you, you inform yourself through, through awareness when, when there is non-attachment and when there is. So uh, the, then the, then the uh, where if you're just depending on a, on a gimmick or on a, on a upaya all the time, that it, it'll, it'll help to a certain degree and then it won't. So this is where this, this investigation, you know, you re- so you really know uh, your mind, how it works, through, not through, through, uh, through methods and, and that, but through uh, real direct uh, insight, seeing the, re- the reality of it. So, so now, say, there's a knowing when, when there's attachment, there's a, I know what attachment is or non-attachment as experience. 
and, I, and I, then the the need for they let it go or that isn't we're saying that isn't necessary anymore. Don't don't need to do that. I can, but it's not not uh, not not necessary to use it. That is is like I I use the Four Noble Truths and uh, the Dependent Origination, my main, but all all of that is is just because with Dhamma uh, Dhamma Nupasana, it's, it's uh, and then you you're also reflecting on the condition, the unconditioned, and. That's where it really takes you to, to uh, a profound profundity. Because, like, 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 I find using the dhamma, dhamma language. Uh, that's a very skillful way to to train yourself to think. 